What's going on guys? <clears throat> Junior's Fishing Company with another inline video. The last video I did was this medium 3 8 ounce inline and so I thought I would mix it up a little bit when I fish a lot of these inlines. So where I fish prime, not primarily, but a good chunk of my fishing is I've got a cabin up in north central Minnesota and it's on a chain of lakes where we've got a small river that feeds in <clears throat> and then a small river that feeds out and in the spring we usually get pretty high water and if we're fishing the river there's usually a, quite a bit of current and I have found with these inlines that have the weight at the top a lot of time in the current they it doesn't swim how I always want it to and I kind of find my, I found myself with my line getting tangled on my front blade and so uh, I'm, I'm sure there's other inlines and stuff like people have done this before but what I kind of came up with is a weight that is in the back under the skirt so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna build this inline and it's just gonna be a little bit different than kind of a traditional inline would be you know if you think of a MEPS or Fox or whatever I'm going to take my blade, I'm going to put my blade on how I always do. This is a uh, size 4 Indiana Hildebrandt in obviously silver. Hildebrandt blades are unbelievable. They're expensive, but I have found that they are worth the, the little investment. And there's a lot of different sizes and there's a couple different colors. They don't have a bunch of like chartreuse and, and stuff like that but just traditional copper gold I think they have black nickel so I've got my blade on there with my number four clevis I'm gonna build a little bit of a body with different size beads I know you can they're like honeycomb or whatever you can buy them in a single piece I really don't care I just I have all these beads anyway so you kinda just it, it, it'll build up and then it'll come down just like a typical again the honeycomb or whatever they're called I've got I'm gonna start with the smallest 5 30 second and then I'm gonna go to 3 sixteenths up to quarter and then I'm gonna put two 5 16th inch beads on there and then you can kinda see that body's kind of getting built. So I'm going to put just two quarter inch beads on there. And the reason I'm putting two quarter inch and not like another five sixteenth is because when I, what you'll see in a sec, when I put that skirt on, these skirts, like all skirts, they have holes, right? If you put a really small bead on the bottom, it's just when it gets wet, that little lubrication is going to push that little bead into your skirt and your blade is going to start hitting the skirt and it's not going to spin very well so you're just going to want to put a bigger quarter inch even the quarter inch sometimes gets pushed through it's really easy to push it back up but the less it happens the less frustrated you're going to be so i always end up just putting two quarter inch beads down there I've got just a Z-Man. This is just a silver skirt. I'm going to put that on first. And then I'm going to take, this is a Bass Academy in, I can't remember, Blue Shad or something like that. I'm going to put that on next. And before I go bend this wire, because there's no weight on there, you could try and cast it without a weight, I guess. I'm going to put, this is just a standard uh, quarter ounce egg sinker just lead I know lead raw lead like this can kind of be a little controversial but um, they're super cheap so now I've got that weight hidden under here so instead of this bait when I let it sink because the thing about an inline like this even if you're in still water if you let this bait sink it's gonna sink nose first and your line 
is going to sink with it like this. And a lot of times when you pull your bait up, your line's going to get caught in your blade. But with a bait like this, it's going to sink if this is your line, very professional here. If it sinks back, your line is going to stay here. So when you engage that, it'll go like this. So I, I can let some of these sink. You know, you might get a snag every now and then, but I can let this thing sink 15 feet. And when I engage my reel, tighten my line, and I give a little rip, I can feel this blade spinning. So then I know it's not a wasted cast. And I found that this kind of profile works really, really well in current and if you're fishing in deeper water and you want this bait to get down, this is the way to do it. So I'm going to get this bait, or this wire, bent up and we'll get a hook on it. Okay, so now when finishing off your inline, um, to make the other loop on the bottom, um, I'm going to show you the steps of how to do that. So when you make your inline, the loop that comes with it is going to be the top, and then you're going to bend out whatever you don't need. And the first rule when you're doing this is you want to make sure that on the top of your bait you leave a quarter inch or less um, to allow that clevis to spin without hitting um, the top bend in your wire. So I've got these little pliers that help create kind of the, um, the nice little loop. So we can just pretend I left this blank so that you, you're going to be able to see everything well. So I'm going to take this right at the bottom where the widest part is and I'm going to bend it about parallel with itself. And then I can take it over to my little screw here and I'm going to want to make sure that this blank line is down towards me. I'm going to bend it, holding the other one, about 45 degrees off of that, off of my screw, and I can take it off. Now it'll get a little crooked, so take a pair of pliers, and you're going to straighten that out. You're going to go back to your screw, and you're going to rotate it one, two, Three is usually good. You can go four if you want. Now I've got all of this tag end, so I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to get as close as I can to that bottom part and I'm going to snip it off. There will be a little piece sticking out here. Um, you can mash it down if you want. The, really the only thing you want to make sure is that you come back here and straighten this out again and you will have your inline ready to fish. Alright, so I've got my wire bent. Again, number three round bend treble. I'm, I put a 20 pound split ring on here and I'm going to feed that on. And I just want to make sure that this hook, because with this weight there's a lot more separation between the hook and my skirt. Sometimes you do kind of get that treble hanging pretty low, and this one is, which is fine. I mean, it's not going to affect the way it swims or anything. But, yeah, building this bead body, and you could, I mean, you could build up the taper and then just put 5 sixteenths here. I've just found that I, I just like how this looks. Does the fish care? Probably not. It's more, you know, half of a bait is for the fishermen to look at. <laughs> and confidence I guess so nice little silver blue pattern a lot of flash a lot of thump with this Indiana blade and I have the opportunity to fish this deeper and you know you can count how long it takes to sink you know the length of your rod or whatever and you can just kind of gauge how deep you're fishing but I do really enjoy throwing these baits if I'm gonna fish deeper than I mean even in clear water deeper than eight, ten feet, I'll throw something that sinks like this. Junior's Fishing Company, juniorsfishing.com.
See you in the next one.